This video is going to be on brain tumors. So I just write brain tumors. And as with all tumors, you can classify it as primary tumors or metastatic. And we'll talk about metastatic first. So metastatic tumors, you can tell it's metastatic in the brain because there'll be multiple lesions. That's how you always tell a metastatic lesion. So if there's multiple lesions in the lung, it's metastatic lung cancer. Multiple lesions in the bone, metastatic bone cancer. And here's no different. So we see multiple lesions in the brain. All right, multiple lesions. And they seem to really like the junction between the gray and white matter. So gray, white junction. And if you see that, you know it's metastatic cancer and then you have to find out what's the primary source. Usually things like lung, things like breast. All right, lung, breast are your primary sources. So that's metastatic, what's your primary? <clears throat> your primary tumors depend on your age. So different age gives you different primary tumors. So we're gonna break it down into adult tumors and we're gonna break it down into childhood tumors of the brain. We'll talk about adults first. So adults, the most common aggressive tumor is gonna be a tumor called glioblastoma multiform. This is a tumor of your glial cells that can take multiple shapes. That's the multiform. The, the glial cell in question is going to be your astrocytes. Do you recall your astrocytes? Your astrocytes were that there was that support cell that basically did it all. Supported your blood-brain barrier, held glycogen, metabolized neurotransmitters. So it did everything. And it was that kind of star shape. That's why I call it astrocytes. So it's that star shaped glial cell. Astrocyte. Toma. And unfortunately, this is the most common malignant and it's also the most aggressive. Our right, most common malignant and most aggressive. It's so locally aggressive, it can start from one hemisphere, go to the other. It can travel through the fibers that connect your two hemispheres, that's called your corpus callosum. So I say cross hemispheres slash corpus callosum. So it's aggressive locally, it's also aggressive outside of that. So it's one of the few brain tumors that metastasizes. Brain tumors, as difficult they are to deal with, thankfully, most of them don't metastasize. However, glioblastoma does. So it's very, very aggressive, both, both locally and the fact that it can metastasize. So you gotta know that well. <clears throat> you cut it open, it just looks horrible. You see necrosis, you see hemorrhage. Everything about this is like the worst things you can imagine. And it'll show up grossly as this mass that crosses the midline, crosses the hemispheres. Or it'll just show a mass that is necrotic, hemorrhagic. Now, microscopically, you're going to see areas of necrosis and then you're going to see the proliferative tumor cells around it. We call that pseudo-palisading. Palisading means to enclose. So it looks like these cells are closing something, but that area is basically necrosis. So it's, it's not really enclosing, it's not really palisading around it. We call it pseudo-palisading. So I'll just say pseudo-palisading. How do we know it's made of your astrocytes? There's an important thing that your astrocytes have, hopefully you remember from our video. It has an intermediate filament called Glial fibrillary acidic protein or GFAP. And when you see GFAP, you know you're dealing with astrocytes. Always, always remember, remember that. So we'll talk about an adult patient having seizures, having signs of raised ICP. You, you do a scan, you do a scan, you see this mass is crossing the midline, necrotic, hemorrhagic, and then they might ask, and then they might say the cells are what? They're GFAP positive, or they show pseudo palisading characteristics. All right, that's glioblastoma multiform or adult astrocytoma. That's your most common malignant, but what's your most common benign or actually your most common overall? Your most common overall is your meningioma. What do you think your meningioma is? A tumor of your meninges. That's not very helpful. Your meninges is made up of three layers. Hopefully you remember dura, arachnoid, pia. This is usually involving the arachnoid layer. And it's more common than your astrocytoma. It's also more common in women. 
because these tumors seem to express estrogen receptors. So you can imagine why it's more common in women. So those are estrogen receptors. Now, grossly, what do you see? Well, your meninges isn't your brain, so it's not actually going to be in your brain. It's on the surface of your brain, and that's good. We can cut it out. We can resect it without affecting your brain. So it's actually going to be in your meninges. So on the outside of brain, it can be attached to your dura. So it's this little like mass, this little pedunculated mass. Let's say attached to dura. But you just need to know because it's affecting your meninges, the surface of your brain. It's not actually affecting your brain itself. And so we can resect it. That's what it looks like grossly. What does it look like microscopically? Microscopically, you're going to see some homo bodies. Those are those giant pink swirls, okay? And that's your meningioma. Let's move on to our next one. Our next one is going to be dealing with tumors of your cells that make your myelin. What are the cells that make your myelin? Oligodendrocytes, swan cells. So swan cells help make the myelin of your PNS. Oligodendrocytes help make your myelin of your CNS. Talk about swan cells first. Tumor of your swan cells is your swanoma. What an easy name. Swanomas like to affect your cranial nerve 8 region. That's no good. That's the cranial nerve that deals with hearing. So you can have hearing loss. <clears throat> also likes your cerebellar pontine region. So all right, cerebellar pontine region. Sometimes they call it cerebellar pontine angle. So this is your brain. This is your cerebellum. This is your brainstem. Here's your pons. It'll be right between your pons and your cerebellum. Now, swanomas can pop up sporadically, but if you have bilateral swanomas, that's not normal. And usually, it's bilateral in your CN8 region, cranial nerve 8 region, so you get deafness. That's associated with something we'll talk about in our next video. That's associated with neurofibromatosis 2. Okay, we'll talk about that in our next video. Now, how do we know these cells are your swan cells? Well, we have markers for that. Where do your swan cells come from again? They come from your neural crest. And one of the biggest markers for your neural crest and a lot, of, a lot of other stuff, but mainly your neural crest is S100. And so these cells will be S100 positive. Gotta, gotta know that. Okay? S100 positive. That's just one cells. How about your oligodendrocytes? So all right, oligo. These like to affect basically the opposite side, your frontal lobe. Frontal lobe. So grossly, you'll see a frontal lobe lesion. Microscopically, there seems to be a lot of capillaries near these, these clusters of mutated oligodendrocytes. So capillaries is a big sign microscopically. See a ton of these red capillaries. And the last adult tumor will also have a lot of capillaries. This one is appropriately named hemangioblastoma. Angio meaning blood, so hemangioblastoma. So you're going to see lots of capillaries. It has so much to do with blood, angio, part of the name, that it actually makes EPO. So it can make EPO. And this one will <laughs> fly back to the opposite side. So it'll affect the, the areas around your occipital lobe, your cerebellum, your spine. All right, cerebellum, spine. And it's it highly associated with something we'll talk about in our next video. I'm, so I'm trying to keep you on the edge of your seat, I guess you can say. So watch my next video. It's highly associated with something that we'll talk about in our next video called Von Hippel Lindau syndrome, okay? VHL. And that is your adult tumors. Now let's talk about kid tumors. Tumors in your childhood is gonna be slightly different. The most common is also gonna be an astrocytoma, but this time it is called pilocytic astrocytoma. It is a well circumscribed benign lesion. Has cystic and solid components. But you know it's an astrocytoma. How do you know it's your astrocytes? Because it's GFAT positive. Easy, easy. You can also see um, these 
proteins that are found in your astrocytes, they look kind of like corkscrews. So you might see those corkscrews on imaging, a uh, picture will be in my notes, but GFAP, dead giveaway, is an astrocytoma. And then if it's a kid, it's a bilocytic astrocytoma. If it's an adult, it is a glioblastoma. Understand? You may have something affecting your epidymal cells. What do your epidymal cells do? Your epidymal cells make your CSF, so this is called an epidymoma. And if it affects your, the cells that make CSF, you can have CSF blockage hydrocephalus. Sorry, hydrocephalus. Microscopically, they love to line blood vessels. So right in the middle, there'll be blood vessels. That doesn't look right. <laughs> so it likes, it likes to line blood vessels. And that's, that's it for that. That was an easy one. Next. Medulloblastoma. Medulloblastoma blastoma deals with these really primitive neuroectoderm cells. So what's neuroectoderm? Going way back to our first video, we said that we have our three layers, endoderm, mesoderm, and your ectoderm. We said your mesoderm makes this cartilage-like rod that tells your ectoderm, hey, we're going to start making our, our nervous system. So part of your ectoderm will become your neuroectoderm and that neuroectoderm will make the neural tube and that neural tube goes to make on your CNS, PNS, etc. So that's your neuroectoderm and some cells of that neuroectoderm can go awry and become your medulloblastoma. So right, neuro neuroectoderm. Grossly, what does it look like? It likes to really affect your cerebellum, okay? So cerebellum. And it can grow and compress the the ventricular system around your cerebellum, especially your fourth ventricle, that causes, as you can imagine, hydrocephalus. If that's not enough, it likes to drop metastasis down, down that area, so down your spinal cord. So all right, drop mets down spinal cord. You can imagine the prognosis of this is not the most favorable. That's what it looks like grossly. You can see the drop nets on, on MRI. You can see the, the cerebellar lesion. What do you see microscopically? Well, this is a, a primitive neuroectoderm cell. So these are gonna be small blue cells. Small blue cells. Now medulloblastoma, if you recall all the way back from our GIT block, is associated with something. Do you remember what it's associated with? It's associated with colonic polyps. We call that Turcot syndrome. Do you remember that now? Turcot syndrome. It's all coming back to us. That was polyps. So a patient has rectal bleeding, headaches, you do a colonoscopy, you see a ton of polyps, and they might ask, what's the cause of the headache or whatever? It's medulloblastoma. The person has Turcot syndrome. Let's move on to your next one. We only have a few more left. This one is a big one. Cranio pharyngioma. So cranial pharyngioma, this is from your Rathke pouch. If you've done endocrine, you know what the importance of your Rathke pouch is. It's basically this, the roof of your mouth invaginates up. I don't want to draw this. This is your mouth with your teeth. <laughs> All right, so the roof of your mouth invaginates up and makes your anterior pituitary. That's your Rathke's pouch. Okay. So in adults, if that pouch goes awry, we can have pituitary adenomas. Pituitary adenomas. And it's right next to your optic chiasm. It can cause bitemporal hemianopia. Bitemporal hemianopia. That's like the classic sign. But this is in adults, and we're not talking about adults here. We're talking about kids. And in kids, this alpouch and this Rathke's pouch doesn't make pituitary adenoma, it makes cranial pharyngiomas. Okay? You can still have the signs of bitemporal hemianopia, but when you biopsy the lesion, you're, you're gonna know it's not pituitary adenoma. You're gonna know it's this because it'll have calcifications. Probably because some of the tissue that was supposed to make your teeth went up and made this instead. So you'll see calcifications, you'll also see a lot of cholesterol. All right. 
All right, so bitemporal is one of the biggest signs in adults, you're thinking pituitary adenoma. In kids, don't think that. Think craniopharyngioma. One last one, and we'll all be done. So the last one is a pineal gland tumor, or pineoloma. Your pineal gland is this very small gland that makes melatonin. And we like melatonin. Melatonin is what helps us to sleep. Sometimes you can buy melatonin over the counter if you have trouble sleeping, you can take that, it helps you sleep. So you can have tumors of this, tumors of this, <laughs> I'm actually gonna write tumors of this. You can have tumors of this and um, the cells of this histologically looks a lot like your germ cells, your sex cells, and in fact it behaves a lot like that. It can produce beta HCG. Beta HCG. And you can imagine in girls this can affect your puberty and your, your menstrual period, and in boys it can also affect your puberty. So all right, it can affect puberty. And as that tumor grows, it can compress on things, as masses do. It can compress on something called your vertical gaze center, something that controls your eyes moving up. If you compress on that and knock it out, then your eyes can move all up. We call that vertical gaze palsy. So vertical gaze palsy. Gaze palsy. A fancy word for that is called perineal syndrome. Syndrome. Perineal syndrome. Perineal syndrome. Those are the tumors of your CNS, both adult and kids. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope that cleared things up. Thanks.